G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel. 1MJ here. Well, as the title says, are there any signs out there that can tell us what's going on? There are signs. There's definitely signs out there. So a great article from Cointelegraph. So it says three bullish signs that overall demand for Bitcoin, 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 I couldn't even say it properly, Bitcoin, it's skyrocketing. And that's the kind of things that we need to look for. Uh, and it's more than just one article, but this is a good indication. Get on YouTube, Google Bitcoin, see the, uh, check the trend of how often Bitcoin's being mentioned in Google searches and things like that. There's all these indicators out there, but you have to take a, uh, you know, take your information from multiple places. Don't just get it from one place. Don't just take my word for it. Don't take anyone from, you know, any one person from YouTube's word for it. Uh, and don't just use YouTube as your one and only uh, kind of wealth of knowledge, you know what I mean? Like get out there and look around. The, the, the signs will be there. As I've said regularly, follow the trend. The trend is your friend. If the trend is things are going up, and then get on board. But just know that at some stage it's going to pull back. And, you know, if you understand charts and have looked into it before, and I'll uh, look in on the chart soon, you'll understand that things are st now starting to move upwards uh, and I would say it's most likely early in the piece, but we'll have to wait and see. But three signs. Unique entity growth uh, mirrors the 2017 bull run. So basically what that means is new Bitcoin wallet addresses are being you know, made at phenomenal rates now. It's matching 2017 bull run and, and we're not even close to you know, that kind of hysteria yet. It's still early in the piece. Uh, big business institutions are getting in and they're usually miles ahead. So if we're already in here now, an institution is just starting, institutional money is just starting to come in and grow the space, retail hasn't even hit this space yet. They're still gonna be probably a couple of months off to maybe a year off. But that is interesting that we're at basically all time highs now. It's like it was this 2017, but it's not 2017 and the prices definitely aren't uh, looking like they were in 2017. We're nowhere near 20,000 yet. Nowhere near. We're still sitting around about 11,000, but it's all slowly starting to happen. So it says here, um, according to data from on-chain monitoring resource Glassnode, as of 4th of August, the average weekly new entity count has returned, so it's been here before, to 140,000. It's highest since early 2018. And that was at the peak. So Bitcoin started to sell off in December 2017, but the alts, they were still kind of pumping into January uh, 2000. Sorry, yeah, Bitcoin sold off in December 2017, but the alts uh, still pumped for a couple of, I think about a week or two after it or something like that is what it was. And so early in 2018, lots of people were still jumping in uh, to, you know, make money. Unfortunately, it was a horrible time to jump in, but... You know, if they knew enough and they've simply held, they're probably going to start to be back into profit fairly shortly. Um, so yeah, a lot going on there. And this one, so Square App, they have made buku dollars, buku dollars from Bitcoin. So they have hit almost one billion in Bitcoin revenue in quarter two, a billion dollars. Now uh, the Cash uh, Square App, uh, they're just one of the first to get in. Uh, of these uh, sort of uh, financial payment, uh, you know, conglomerates and things like that. So obviously there's been word that PayPal are going to do the same. And PayPal, uh, they're even bigger than, you know, the Cash Square app again. They're an absolute behemoth. So once they start getting into uh, cryptocurrencies and particularly Bitcoin and that, obviously the demand will increase and you're really going to see Bitcoin, you know, start to push up at a fairly hectic sort of rate once things like that happen. When we get not just... The retail, uh, sorry, yeah, not just the institutional uh, investors in, they're going to push it up. They're buying up lots, particularly grayscale and things like that. But once the retail sector hit and the demand becomes, you know, a lot more than what it is now, uh, the the price is going to skyrocket. In my opinion, anyway, that's what I believe. Not financial advice, and I can't tell you exactly what price I think Bitcoin's going to go to, because I I just don't know. It, it would be a guess, uh, but I'm going to say it's. It's going to go up a long way from where it is right now. That would be my best guess. So there's some signs. Now we go over here. Bitcoin will get stronger after crisis, says US Congress, 
Congressman uh, Emma. Now he's uh, been a bit of a Bitcoin um, enthusiast uh, and cryptocurrency enthusiast for a while. So he, he said things like this uh, before when he's, uh, you know, been up in Parliament and things like that. But the sentiment's starting to grow. And so basically he goes on to say that, you know, this crisis is still looming uh, of COVID and all the rest of it, the pandemic. And at the end of it, he believes crypto is going to be sort of like a savior because cash is, you know, it's struggling at the moment. It just continually loses more and more value and where, you know, they're printing it into near oblivion at the moment. And he believes it's going to be uh, what's going to be left standing at the end of it. It's not that cash will be completely gone. Obviously, there'll be digital cash, but even regular cash in hand, that's not just going to disappear overnight. That'll be something that's slowly but surely, uh, you know, sort of phased out. And it has been slowly being phased out for a long time now anyway. That's why they didn't have enough cash on hand when this all originally started. Uh, most of it was already on a sort of ledger type thing. It was just, you know, zeros and ones on computer screens and all the rest of it. But also, people like uh, Tim Draper, so, uh, you know, a, a billionaire investor who got into uh, blockchain sort of fairly early, and particularly Bitcoin. So he predicts that Bitcoin will be one of the most crucial tools for recovering from the global financial crisis. When the world comes back, it will be Bitcoin, not banks and governments that save the day, Draper said. Now, you know, take that with a bit of a grain of salt. He's an early investor into Bitcoin. He's one of the whales. He obviously wants Bitcoin to do really, really well because it makes him worth a whole lot more money. But he is quite smart and he's been in the space for a while and it's not just Bitcoin that he's invested in. He's invested in a number of other things uh, within the whole crypto space in general. But that also means that he probably knows a thing or two. He is what some people would consider smart money. Now, not everyone. There's always going to be detractors from anyone and say, oh, he's not smart money. But, you know, he was a billionaire before Bitcoin. And now that he's into Bitcoin, you know, I'm sure he got it at quite the price when he originally got in. So, yes, he's been worth more in terms of Bitcoin, particularly when it hit 20000 but I'm sure he understands and sees the cycles and where it's going uh, and is still accru accruing more uh, Bitcoin in various ways, uh, you know, shorting the market and all the rest of it uh, and longing it. You know, he's a smart guy, but he is going to be worth a sweet penny more than what he currently is. And again, I would consider that smart money. One of the, you know, the big time uh, investors, uh, he's still bullish on Bitcoin. So, yeah, I, I like to, you know, try to follow the smart money. You know, it'd be good if I could keep pace with them, but I can at least follow them. But that means I'm behind them and they're in front of me. So that's all right. You know, we do what we can. So we go over here and we talk about Square App. Obviously, you know, they've seen their revenue just, you know, jump massively. Uh, and other financial institutions and payment ramps and things like that, again, like PayPal, they're going to take notice of this when they, you know, make a billion in quarter two of the year and they, they did that through bitcoin and they did it during a financial crisis other payment yeah revenue uh platforms and that they are going to pay attention and they're going to be on it quick smart you can bet that's what smart money does they see what's happening and they jump on nice and early now anyone who's already in this space believe it you are early Half the institutional money hasn't even come across yet. Half the institutional money, it'd be even more than that. I'm quite sure of it. Because if it was only half, the price would be skyrocketing already. Only the early smart adopters, like you can look at uh, some of the, uh, oh, not Tim Draper, I can't remember his name, Paul Tudor Jones, that's him. So he's a massive uh, hedge fund wealth manager. He has put in 2%, I think, of his uh, hedge funds total worth into cryptocurrencies. Now, he's getting cash back for it. He, do he doesn't obviously believe in it enough to take the cryptocurrencies, but he sees that there's opportunities there. So he's putting money in and that is still going to drive adoption and push up the price. He can decide that he doesn't want to be paid out in Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever, and he just wants to take the cash. Cool. Obviously, running a hedge fund, he has to know something. He's pretty smart. But that just maybe means that he isn't smart enough to know that cryptocurrencies are the way of the future and simply converting them into cash 
may not be the best idea. You know, we'll have to wait and see, but he knows that there's money to be made and he put 2% of all of his hedge funds worth into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. So again, these are all the things that are going to, going to give you a bit of an idea of where the market's headed, uh, you know, at least in the short term, but you can't even look in the long term. If institutional money's getting in and then it starts to be offered to the retail, which is basically what's happening, it is a long-term thing. Again, it'll end up like, it is like any market, it's just more volatile at the moment, more explosive, uh, and the other way around. So the highs are unbelievably high and the lows are unbelievably low, but that will all start to settle out and eventually cryptocurrencies will be exactly like normal stocks and things like that. You know, the, they won't be as volatile, so high and low, they will sort of level out, but still go up the good ones, you know, and the, the bad ones and the crap ones, they'll just disappear. But it's things like this that is, again, th these are the things you need to be looking for. You know, get information from all the sources. Again, Google Trends. Put in, you know, where's Bitcoin trending? Where's cryptocurrency trending? And if it's just going up and up and up and up, then obviously there's a trend there. The trend is your friend. When it starts to do the opposite and it's, you know, detrending, then obviously you might have to have a look at that. But again, don't just base it off Google, but Google's a place to start. Now let's go over here, let's have a look here. And we spoke about it the other day. Market cap, $354 billion. So let's click on market cap. Just wait for it to load. All right, we can see obviously this is 2017 and it looks much like the normal Bitcoin chart. It peaked, then we hit our low and it's just slowly starting to build. So look at this peak here. This was a peak back in July 2019. We sold off a bit, we started to rise again, the pandemic happened, we pulled down and we're starting to come back up again. But if you look at this peak over here, that now levels off with this. We've now hit this uh, kind of price and obviously it's now giving this one a bit of a run for its money. So it's now starting to head up to you know that kind of market cap. So the market cap is starting to grow again. That is the trend. For a long time, the trend was going down, pump a bit, going down, pump a bit, going down. And it was just constantly getting lower and lower and lower until it hit here. And then once it hit here, the trend started to change. Now it just started to move sideways. And if something is moving sideways and for a period of time, that generally tells you that the bottom's probably in. There's no guarantees, things can change, but that was a you know a quite a significant drop from the top and it started to range sideways from where it was ranging, you know, sideways-ish before it went parabolic last time. It was pretty close. So again, that's another way to tell if maybe the bottom's in, you know. No one can predict it exactly, but they're the things. The trend was it was going up. All right, so you follow the trend, but you just gotta be ready to take some money when things are really ramping up like that. Then the trend was down. If you wanna do your leverage stuff, you obviously can start to short the market because it's probably gonna keep going down for a while, but just realize that it changes at times, right? It went down, started to move back up. So you just gotta wait and see what happens. You know, trends, it's hard to read a trend uh, on the, the minute, on the hourly, on the 45 minutes. I'm not saying you can't, a lot of traders use that kind of stuff, but I mean follow more the long-term trend. So it pumped up, but we didn't get any sideways movement. Then it dropped down, you got a tiny bit of sideways movement in there, but then it just dropped. So what you're waiting for is where it's no more of pumping up really hard and then dropping really hard. You need to get some sideways movement for a while. And again, it sort of got it here, but it was a bit of a fake out, dropped down sideways and then you got some sideways movement so you're like all right this wouldn't have been a bad time to get in i'm not saying it would have been the best but then uh it dropped off but then it went sideways again and it went sideways for a long time and then started to build its way up that's how you can tell the trend has changed it trended sideways for such a long time and there was no massive spikes up you know this kind of stuff back here that that's that's how you know there's no real trend there at the moment. There's some, some euphoria and probably some market manipulation and things like that. Trading sideways for a period of time and you know months on end, generally a good indication that the bottom's in. So then it slowly made its way up. 
let's go over to the Bitcoin chart. It's the actual better place to sort of see it. Again, that was the total market cap chart. This is the Bitcoin chart. Uh, very similar, but not exactly the same. So again, you just had these massive run-ups. This is how you know you're in a bull market. When it just keeps peaking up and the drop-offs are pretty heavy, but then it peaks up higher. And then, you know, the drop-off is, you know, pretty horrendous, but then you peak up higher again. That is a bull market. That's the definition of a bull market right there. And then the definition of a bear market is it drops really hard. It'll pump up really hard, but not as high as it was before. Then it'll drop really hard. And then it'll pump really hard, but not as high as before. Then it'll drop really hard. That is the trend. So the trend there is telling you you're in a bear market. This is probably not the time to be investing, you know, shorting the market. Maybe I don't do any leverage trading and I don't openly endorse it to anyone. But if that's what you're into, knock your socks out. But again, you're waiting for the trend to change. So again, it pumped up really hard sold off but the highs were never getting higher and the lows were getting lower lower highs lower lows bear market now we got to a point here where it traded sideways for a little bit could the trend have changed bang it pumped up no probably not nothing should rise that hard that fast and then sold right off so a bit of a fake out then it traded sideways for a long time and this wouldn't have been a bad place to get into the market if you did now, people will probably look at it and say, oh, look at it, that's bloody terrible. That's in hindsight. But again, the average price of Bitcoin for three years was between 6000 and 8000 This is low on the $6,000 sort of end, so it wouldn't have been so bad. Yes, this would have hurt and scared you. Probably would have last, lost 50% of, uh, you know, of what you had there. But if you knew Bitcoin... And just watched it and noticed it spiked back up. So after a heavy drop, it spiked back up, which is a concern. Leveled off a bit. And then it just slowly started to grow. Parabolic, and that's a worry, but then it consolidated. Sort of parabolic and parabolic. And so that's slight concern. But again, that could have just meant we're in a new bull market. And we were for a while there. Traded sideways for a long time. Fairly volatile. Sold off. Sideways. Sold off. But then we started to make our way back up again. And again, you know, the whole pandemic thing, that really, that obviously made a big difference and really hurt. So bang, this massive drop off. And then it really started to pump up. And that's, you know, good and bad in a way. It's good that it's recovering because that might show you that that's exactly what it is. This is just recovery. Unless it then sold off and fell down here. Again, that means you're back in that bear market again. But this pumped up, good recovery traded sideways for a little bit you know up and down up and down then you had a fairly big move and so concerning is it going to sell off really hard no sideways for a while pumped up retraced back to this sort of level of support and then it was just really volatile which is what bitcoin does other markets aren't the same but trading sideways it was basically building some support here the lows were generally getting higher the highs got higher for a while and then the highs got lower, but the lows weren't getting lower. So that is just that typical wedge pattern. And so again, it was wedging in here. The lows were getting higher, the highs started getting lower and it was just that sideways action and then bang, you get that breakout. Now you get that breakout and what you're watching for is that it doesn't sink right off and form a lower low. And it didn't do that. It pumped up, so we get over here pumped up dropped down but pumped up drop sort of way down and now we can see that we just have some consolidation going on here because this is the daily chart and we have consolidation the lows outside of these wicks are generally sort of getting a little bit higher this one was low but roughly if we put a line in what is that trend telling us sorry so don't worry about the wicks too much. We go by the candle bodies. The lows are getting higher again. Now, does that mean it can't break this trend? Absolutely it can, and it might travel sideways for quite a while. It could just bang, go massively to the upside. But have we seen something similar to this before? Low, low, low. And then we got here, sold off a little bit. 
traded sideways, but again, it was still wedging. It started to form another wedge here and then bang, broke out. So the key, you know, the key indicators, they're all there, you've just got to find it. And my personal opinion is we are in a bull market and it's quite possible we've been in a bull market since back here. And I guess technically looking back, you know, you could say that that's exactly what it is. Good pump up, some sideways trading, had a sell off for correction and we started to pump back up. But again, we hadn't broken this trend line, but yeah, that's my opinion. I believe we're definitely, uh, you know, in, an old, in a new, uh, sorry, excuse me, I'm struggling with my English here today. We are in a bull market. And, I, and my personal thoughts is it started way back in 2000 and sort of uh, 19, uh, and this has been part of it. But we'll have to wait and see. Some people might say this is more the start of the bull market because we hadn't broken out of that, you know, uh, pennant, you know, the, the wedging. So, yeah, that's my opinion. And, again, I think the information is out there if you just know what to look for. Don't believe just one source. Again, don't believe just YouTube. Don't, don't believe uh, just, uh, what do you call it, uh, Google. Don't believe just Cointelegraph. All great sources of information but you need to gather it all as a collective and then that's where you're going to find the gold. The gold's going to be right there. And then, you know, once you understand, if, you know, how trends work and how charts work, you know, if you want to move into, you know, uh, technical analysis and, th analysis and things like that and become a trader, go ahead and knock your socks off. I, I do some swing trades on occasion, but I'm not really uh, a trader. I'm more an investor. I just, you know, I, I'm following the market and I'm finding the best time to get into the market. And again, I originally, you know, got into Bitcoin back here when it just went parabolic. Uh, and then I watched, you know, what I, a couple of hundred dollars turn into a couple of thousand dollars. And then those couple of thousand dollars literally dropped down to only a couple of hundred dollars. But it's all started to work its way back up. And I, again, I, you know, I put some money in uh, late last year. Uh, and since then, I've just been uh, continuing to reinvest. So I started reinvesting back here. When I came back, had a look at the charts, and I was like, all right, this looks like things are changing. The bear market has ended, and things are starting to pump and move on. So just my personal, th my personal thoughts, sorry. Uh, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you made some gains today, and I'll see you next time.